Well, for the last 15 years, I've been working in the Gampa district and in my electorate. So I believe that I have done justice uh, by working there, doing my service there in that area. And because of that, I, have, I see no reason for me to change my district and move on to a different area. The United National Party has a set of principles that I believe in. Um, these days you find politicians who switch sides very easily for their own personal reasons, for their, to get personal benefits. But um, I believe in the party and I believe in the principles of the United National Party, so I will stay with the United National Party. Uh, it's, it's a challenge. The United National Party is facing a challenge, but I believe that we have a, 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 a voter base that is uh, very devoted to the United National Party. And if the voter base comes with us in this election, uh, I believe we can have a reasonable victory in this, in this general election. Well, I don't think you can just blame one person for the losses. Uh, it's, it's very easy. When we win, we win as a party. When we lose, we blame the leader. But I don't think that's fair. I think we all have to share the blame when we lose, uh, not only the leadership. Uh, he's been there, he's been given our party the leadership for, for the last 20 odd years. So, uh, yes, I don't think we can just blame him for everything, that, you know, for all the losses of the party. No, there is democracy in the party, um, but if you, you can't have 100% uh, democracy in any political party. Uh, if there is 100% democracy in any political party, there will be chaos inside the party. But uh, when you, uh, if you compare the United National Party to any other party, there is quite a considerable amount of uh, you know, democratic rule which is, happens in, inside the UNP. Um, as opposed to any other party, if you take the Porto, it's, it's a family-run party. If you look at the Samagi Balavege, it's, it's uh, based on Sajid Premadasa, but the United National Party is a party that uh, believes in democratic norms and uh, within our party there is uh, sufficient democratic rule. I believe uh, Mr. Anil Vikramasinghe will give the party leadership to a person that he believes will take the party forward. Uh, the per person who can win the hearts and minds of our, our voter base and uh, genuinely work for the country as well as for the party. So I believe when he identifies that person that he will give the, the leadership to that person. As for me, I think I, I can't say that I am going to be the leader of this party. That will. I think our party supporters and uh, my fellow uh, uh, ministers and uh, members of parliament will decide on who the appropriate leader will be in the future. Uh, I don't know if, if I, my name is linked to the Easter Sunday attack. I, that question is a bit, it kind of shows that I was part of the conspiracy, of which I am not. Uh, unfortunately, I, uh, it is, uh, you know, the loss, um, the human lives that were lost uh, at the attack is, uh, is absolutely regrettable. Um, I had to work as the State Minister of Defence during that time. But what I have to uh, mention to the people is that uh, my powers as uh, State Minister of Defence was very limited. Um, I had, uh, you know, my functions was gathered by the president who was the defense minister at the time uh, to look after uh, the uh, staff and command, uh, uh, Batalan, the staff and command uh, college, then the, the defense schools, uh, and of course the, uh, the cadet corps and the Ranaviru Seva Authority. So those were my functions as, as a minister and I did my duty well, I believe. But unfortunately, uh, there was uh, 
after the 52 day issue uh, which occurred where President Maitri Palasi Sena brought in Mahindra Rajapaksa as, uh, as a Prime Minister and after we fought it uh, on the courts and then there was a constitutional crisis at the moment but we we uh, you know overcame that and uh, we established a UNP government at the time. At that time the president and the UNP government didn't see eye to high. Um, as a result, the Prime Minister and I were not invited to the Security Council meetings or were not uh, given any information uh, by the intelligence services or by uh, police or by the three forces commanders. We were, we were pretty much blocked out. Um, so because of that, the information flow of the attack did not reach uh, many levels of the government. Um, so that was an unfortunate incident uh, which resulted uh, in this devastating attack. Well, just before he left, um, he had a meeting with the Security Council, uh, with the Cabinet Ministers and the Opposition uh, Leaders. And at that time, I made, a, I, I, I made an observation before he left. I said that there could be clashes between the Sinhala and Muslim communities in certain areas. So we need to identify those areas and we need to uh, you know, mobilize the troops as well as the SDF into those areas to prevent any clashes uh, between the two communities. But unfortunately, at the time, you know, the president just smirked and uh, he ended the, the meeting. Uh, but the next day, uh, we got to know that certain areas in Kurunagala and in Puttalam, the clashes had erupted. At that point, we quickly established uh, 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 an office uh, in the CDS, uh, which is uh, uh, Admiral Rabi Vijayagunamodhana's uh, office, uh, to look at, you know, the operational office was established there. And from there, we got the three forces commanders as well as uh, the IGP and the STF head. From there, we conducted the operations to stop these clashes in these areas. And within that day, by the end of that day, uh, we managed to stop all the clashes happening in, uh, and avoided a mass scale bloodshed, which would have, if we didn't stop it at that time, would have spread to other parts of the country. Well, since this is a general elections, we do not put our own manifestos out. It's, it's the party that puts the manifesto out. So uh, we launched our manifesto as to how we are going to, which mainly concentrated on how uh, we are going to face this economic issues that the, the, the country is facing because of the coronavirus uh, uh, issue, which the pandemic. Um, but I think, uh, you know, for the past 15 years, me personally, I have worked in my electorate in my district. I have, uh, you know, done various projects in those areas, and I believe the people uh, believe in me and uh, would, uh, I think, vote me in into parliament again. Well, five key areas. Uh, well, the main area I would like to concentrate is on education because in my district, Kampa district, education is is uh, a number one priority amongst uh, parents and students and, and children, obviously. Uh, so because of that, I feel that, uh, you know, uh, the education in the Kampa district can, you know, we can do way more in that area, uh, especially in the teaching of the new technologies, you know. Uh, I think younger people have a tendency to look at, you know, technology now. Uh, I think we can benefit greatly if we uh, enhance uh, that kind of education into our curriculum now, um, which was something that we were planning to do during our government and unfortunately um, the former president uh, did not let us do what we were planning to do at that time. Otherwise, we could have, uh, I think, taken this country uh, to another level.
Well, one thing that I'm really proud of is that we, uh, we as a government managed to speak with the United Nations as well as uh, other defense ministers in uh, some of the key uh, countries uh, and managed to secure amount of uh, our forces to be uh, allowed to join the, the peacekeeping missions. Uh, that was, I think, a key, key issue that we worked on. Um, because of that, we managed to send some of our troops to Mali for peacekeeping missions. From that, I think they get great benefits out of that, um, you know, because they get paid by dollars, you know, the country benefits as well as the soldiers benefit out of it. So that was one thing that I, you know, the Prime Minister is the one who, who actually initiated that. And under his leadership, I managed to speak to most of the defense ministers around the world and uh, secured a position for us to uh, send our troops for peacekeeping missions, that was one. But there were so many things that I managed to do. There were, as uh, for the veterans, the veterans had huge uh, issues when it came, there was anomalies about their pensions, uh, their benefits, their disabl disability benefits. And those I managed to speak with the then uh, finance minister, Mangala Samarira, and managed to untangle a lot of issues that uh, the veterans were facing at the time. So I'm quite proud of that as well as uh, on the cadet corps. Um, you know, the junior cadet corps was pretty much uh, not functioning. Uh, when I took over, we managed to, you know, revive the junior cadet corps, and um, I'm quite proud of it because now there is a lot of uh, interest amongst parents as, as well as children to join the junior cadet corps. Well, under the last government, we, um, uh, we did the Camparilla uh, project where each electorate got uh, 350 million uh, to, you know, do all the development work in our area. So through that, uh, I managed to do quite a lot of development work in, in, in my Biakam electorate. And there was, of course, uh, the education minister at the time, Akhili Viraj, had uh, the, uh, a project called Langam Pasala, Hondam Pasala, project which uh, basically gave a lot of uh, uh, you know money to build um, you know buildings and all which the the area uh, schools needed and through that I managed to I think one national school we uh, spent um, about 40 million I think to build uh, uh, a brand new building for that school and then uh, of course there was another uh, another school which used which is under the provincial council but we managed to secure some money for that and uh, give them uh, build two new buildings for that school as well so I'm quite proud of that so there were a lot of things that we did plus uh, the some of the families you know, families who needed you know uh, the some of these about 1200 families we managed to secure the some of these for them and so there was a lot that I did during that last four and a half years. Well, um, if I think I have done, uh, you know, for the past 15 years as a politician, I think I've done my service to the area, uh, to the people of my area. And um, I think I have, uh, you know, gained their confidence in me. And so I believe that in this election that uh, not only the UN peers, uh, but also uh, the people of that area will look at me favorably and elect me back into parliament.